Welcome to a brand new episode of Viral Killer. In this episode, we're gonna... Wait a minute. Can you hear that? Has anyone ever survived giving birth to a chestburster? Is it even possible? Even if you have the best surgeons. In Aliens Colonial Marines, the game, the Marines try to get a Weyland Yutani doctor to remove a near hatching chestburster from one of their teammates. The doctor said that it would be impossible, they tried and failed many times, because the embryo's support system taps into multiple organs, like some sort of cancer, to fuel the embryo's growth. So even with full medical support, even if the host survives the trauma of the birthing process, the host still dies of multiple organ failure. Well, we all know Ripley 8 managed to get one extracted in the movie Alien Resurrection, even though she's technically not human. It's unlikely a real human could have survived the operation. The United Systems military research team had originally hoped to clone the Xenomorph Queen back to life from the samples found on Fury 161, but this quickly proved impossible, and attempts at cloning Ripley and the Queen together resulted in genetic crossing, leading to horrifically deformed creatures that were essentially fusions of Ripley and the Xenomorph combined at a genetic level. Nevertheless, after seven failures and repeated refinements of the procedure, the USM scientists rallied their efforts to create an eighth successful clone, an apparently perfect recreation of Ellen Ripley in the infant queen gestating inside her. The project had taken 10 years to reach fruition, but the scientists finally achieved their goal and recovered the infant chestburster before it could emerge via surgery. In Alien 3, it's hinted at that Weyland Yutani had the technology to surgically remove the Queen. Or maybe they were lying to Ripley and were just gonna let her die in a cage. Okay, so who else has survived a chestburster? Well, there's also Karen Delacroix. Karen is a genetically enhanced human who's able to change appearances and is a trophy wife to a wealthy individual. Karen is unique in that she's the only sane and non-fanatical person to willingly allow herself to be facehugged, and in fact put the facehugger on her face herself, as opposed to the fanatics who just waited by the egg. After the chestburster erupted from her, thanks to her genetically enhanced body, she was able to regenerate and come back as Ash Parnell, who's very different personality-wise, less merciful and colder. Anyway, she appears in Aliens Renegade and Aliens vs Predator, deadliest of the species if you want to check her out. Then we have Elizabeth Shaw from Prometheus. Technically, she didn't survive a chestburster, but a belly burster. Shaw attempted to use Vickers' unique MedPod 720i to perform a caesarean, but found that the pod was calibrated for male patients only, and thus could not perform the procedure. Shaw was forced to improvise, and managed to instruct the MedPod to remove the embryo by using a setting for foreign biomasses. As she began the procedure, the embryo began to move more violently. The MedPod amazingly managed to cut it out of her successfully. When the embryo emerged, it was a squid-like alien that was immediately violent and flailed around, attempting to attack Shaw, but was restrained by a mechanical arm. Shaw quickly had the MedPod close up her abdomen with medical staples, and attempted to kill the embryo by activating the MedPod's decontamination procedure. In the original script for Prometheus, Elizabeth had actually suffered a chestburster wound rather than the C-section in the movie. Things inside the MedPod were lighting up about compound fractured ribs, internal bleeding and collapsed lungs, and she was lapsing in and out of consciousness for days. She watched the life cycle of the Xeno from the safety of the MedPod. So that would have been the first canon instance where a normal human survives a chestburster. Dr. Paul Church is another human who survived a chestburster, albeit it was weak and dying already. He managed to make it back to the Incunabulum, the ship he arrived on, and scraped together enough surgical knowledge to remove the chestburster himself, finding it was already dead. The surgery was a success, and Church suffered no long-term ill effects afterwards. So those are all the chestburster survivors I know of. If you know anyone else, please let me know in the comments below. Who else survived the chestburster? I'd love to know. Now onto my Patreon squad. Patreon. If you enjoyed the video, so consider Patreon. becoming a Patreon, Patreon. supporter. A For as little as a dollar a month, you can join this Patreon squad panel. Now including a free message. And if you don't want to join Patreon, but want to help the channel anyway, follow these steps. First subscribe, 
get rid of that annoying banner, hit the bell icon, like, and share. The sharing really helps. And the cherry on top, a comment. That's the rocket fuel that's going to propel the video to a top spot. Well, as close as it can get. So follow these steps and you might as well have given me $5. Thank you. Also, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Check out my store for some viral merchandise. Okay, I'm done.